I know this type of video is never requested by anybody at all, but I am a very, very lonely video game player, so I like to have a conversation from time to time, especially when I finish a game. And today we're going to talk about Final Fantasy XV. I finished it maybe like a week ago. I was on level 68, 77 hours. Where do I begin? Okay, well, first of all, before playing this game, I didn't read anything about it. I wanted to go in like with, with no information. And as you will see if you watch my first impressions of Final Fantasy XV video, I was not enjoying it. In fact, I hated it for about eight hours and somehow, strangely enough, when I got to the first tomb, I started to like it and I stuck with it all the way to the end. After writing down my thoughts, but before filming this video, I have watched a few reviews of the game, but I'm going to not let that affect the thoughts I have to say here today. However, I did want to say that I did not watch the movie, the anime, I did not download any additional content, I did not purchase any DLC because I just don't do that. Uh, I guess because I'm old or something. Okay, so I kind of wrote down some thoughts and I'll go through them with you just so I can have this customary end of game discussion since I have no one to discuss with. Uh, Iggy was my favorite. Ignis, I loved him. Oh my gosh. But I really did like all the characters. Pronto, he kind of hates himself and that's kind of annoying. And Gladio, um, kind of made me mad towards the end, yelling at me too much. But I really did like everyone. And Noctis, I thought he was pretty boring, but eventually he got a little more interesting. Like, you could kind of understand his character a little bit more. So I was happy with all the, all the four characters. I have so many thoughts, but my impression was um, that Luna, like, there wasn't really a point to her and their love, Noctis and Luna's love was like very arranged marriage-like, um, very anticlimactic. And um, I was kind of left wondering what the whole point of Luna was at all. And I'm not really into that like demure oh, mm, female character kind of thing. Kind of like Yuna, reminds me of Yuna. Um, and then there are certain characters like Monica and Kor who you thought were going to be important and then they weren't. And um, maybe this would make more sense to me if I had watch the movie or the anime or maybe I'm missing some storyline from some DLC that I abstained from but Arden kind of seems like a random bad guy like I guess I wasn't expecting him to be the real bad guy I thought he was just like some crazy dude who popped in from time to time but I didn't know he was going to be like the final boss and I'm not really sure how I even Felt about him because sometimes I was like <laughs> he's pretty cool and then sometimes I'm like what whatever I loved the summons the gods um, I loved how big they were and um, how they were kind of indifferent they weren't necessarily like a fan of me but you know sometimes they chime in to help I, I just thought that was really sublime because I would like to that's how I would like to imagine real gods would be compared to us but like a reviewer did point out you don't get to choose when they come and that was kind of that was that was a really good point that was kind of upsetting but this whole time i always think i'm doing something wrong if something's too hard i'm like well i'm just not good at it if uh, if the battle a battle mechanism makes no sense, like you can only summon like a couple times. I just think, well, I just don't understand how how to induce a summon. If if I don't understand the meaning of something that happened in the story, I'm like, I guess I just wasn't paying attention at a certain point. 
or if some random person appears and appears to have some sort of significance and I've never seen them before, I'm just like, again, oh, I must have just not been paying attention. But since I've watched a couple other reviews of this game, I realize it's not me. It is not me. So yes, I found the lack of summonability to be kind of disappointing. Okay, at first I thought these mundane ass side quests of like running errands for random people, I thought that was so stupid, but after a while I found it to be really satisfying, if that makes sense. So like take on a new side quest, check it off the list, get that treasure, get that money, get that experience. I started to like the flow of it. I. I mean, it's not your typical Final Fantasy. Um, it wasn't, you know, emotional, but it was satisfying. I did a lot of the side quests. I even did that freaking Castle Mark Tower. That was awful. But I think the re what I liked about this system is that it was not linear for once. Um, you could. You could decide everything you wanted to do and when you wanted to do it, and I thought that was really cool. Okay, people have had really good things to say about the landscapes, like the way the world looked. And honestly, I mean, okay, yeah, like details and like graphics and stuff were great, but I think as far as design, I wasn't very impressed because it just looked like our world. I wanted something a little more like fantasy or something a little more different. Uh, and then that jagged mountain thing, that was different, but like, I don't know, I was just like, this is just like being in Arizona or something. So I wasn't dazzled by it, but it's whatever. I realized that there is a lot of information I am missing about the four characters because I didn't play any DLC, but I did really, really love the bond between the four guys, like, I felt like I was a part of it. Something about, I don't know, maybe it is the way we go through so much mundane crap together. 24 hours a day, day in, day out, it really kind of helps you get to know the guys and, like, make memories with them, however minuscule the memories are. And I just, I really, I really liked the friendship. Again, maybe I played it wrong, but... I was, I really love town exploration. That's like my thing. That's what I like about RPGs. So I, I can't believe like we only went to like two towns to, or cities and then we just had a bunch of like junky outposts and then that was, that's, that's the places you have to go. Oh, and then dungeons, of course. Let's not forget the dungeons. But yeah, I was just kind of like waiting to get to the towns, to get to more cities, and um, that didn't happen. And then when we freaking got to a city, like, I don't even know if I looked at 25% of Altitia. Like, I have no idea. That place was a mess. And why did we only spend, like, 20 minutes there? I don't know. What did I think of the battle system? Well, anything that's not turn-based, old and grumpy, uh, I'm just kind of like, uh, whatever. I just, I'm just... You know what, I'll say it, I'm a button masher, okay? Because I don't like this stuff. And then, of course, you can't even really mash buttons in this game, you hold it. You hold the button. And that's how you fight. But it was beautiful, I liked the warp, the warp thing, um, whatever. I did kill like 15 red giants, and I think that took some talent. So I'm pretty proud of myself. Okay, let me talk about the soundtrack. Um. It was like chill, it was nice or whatever, like kind of jazzy, you know. I felt inclined to say like at some points this sounds really Japanese and I don't know how I can back that up but I just feel like this is Japanese, this sounds Japanese. But you know what, I feel like it didn't really matter what songs were playing where because I felt like the only songs I was hearing was the map the menu, and the chocobo song. And 
that really kind of annoyed me because if I was somewhere and I liked the song that was playing, but I had to like check my map or check my gear or whatever, like I'd have to pull up a menu and the, the music would go away. That was, that was annoying. Also, this is random, but I felt really kind of uh, spoiled that I start the game out with a car that can go everywhere and a chocobo. Like, that used to be something that you had to work so hard to earn. And then in 15, they just like throw it to you at the beginning of the game. I'm like, oh, okay. Okay, can we talk about like the catchphrases and the repetitious dialogue? I have to say, I loved it. There's something about that feature of a video game that makes it feel like a video game like a classic video game even. It's helping us not to lose that quality of a game where things kind of get hammered into your head over and over or things become super super familiar. If that makes any sense. I mean, it reminds me of when you were playing an RPG where there wasn't voiceovers and uh, you would go talk to a person and they had nothing else to say so they would keep just saying the same thing. Like every time you approach them, they would just say the same phrase again. And I don't know, I can't explain why I like that, but it just kind of has that classic quality to it. I loved Iggy's catchphrases. That's it! And I loved when Prompto sang the victory song after a battle. I love when he goes, I want to ride my chocobo all day. That's the best. I, that made playing 15 worth it. The only catchphrase that I really got sick of was, Didn't lose the jacket. Okay, um, and people have addressed how there's not really like an emotional attachment to the things that happen in the game, like especially the disasters that happen in the game, but let me just say that really the only thing in the game that truly upset me was when Ignis went blind. That devastated me. I was kind of depressed for a couple days. I almost like wanted to stop. It just shattered everything. Like Iggy was my comfort. He was my rock. He was my favorite, like the thing that kept me going. And when he got blinded, like it really, really broke my heart. And for a long time, I had faith that it was gonna get better and it just didn't. I kind of wish that didn't happen at all, but he's okay. He's in good spirits and that's what matters. So after finishing the game and watching a few reviews and kind of like, it really did bring to light the flaws of the game that I was kind of glossing over because I was just thinking I did something wrong or I wasn't paying attention, whatever. Uh, and it is it's a little sad, especially because, you know, the development hell that goes on behind the scenes that people don't really consider. Like, it's sad. The latest Final Fantasy I played before this was 13, and I finished it, but I wanted to throw it out the window like a frisbee a gazillion times, but I finished it. And I, I thought 15 was so much better. It was so much more fun. It really is a hard game to describe to somebody if they haven't played it. Like, basically, it's just a game where you do things. You fight, you hang out with your friends, and you go camping, and you let Big Boob Cindy wipe off your windshield and yell at you in her terrible fake southern accent. Okay, well I guess I'll just wrap it up there, but those are kind of my thoughts about Final Fantasy XV. Um, I think I'll come back to it one day and play it some more, but not today. See, I had a goal set for 2018 to complete three games, and it's October now, so I don't know if I'm actually going to make it, but I played, I finished Tales of Berseria, and then Final Fantasy XV, and next I'm going to play Skyrim, but I don't even know if that's like a game that, like, you want to finish. Like, seriously, I don't even know what I'm getting into. Um, but I'm going to try that, and then of course you have Spyro coming out in November, so maybe I can complete one of the three Spyros by end of 2018. But if I don't, who cares, because what matters is that I've been having fun. That is it, my friends. If you have uh, played Final Fantasy XV and want to talk about it, 
let's talk about it because I only know like one person. Yeah, I know one person that's played it and finished it. That wraps it up for today. Walk tall, my friends. <laughs>